here. Well, crashed again. Looked pretty promising until it uh, hit the floor. I think the CG is right. And honestly, like, hey, if it, if it had some room, it might have actually worked. <sighs> As of the completion of this, the Mark 5.1, I have printed and built nine separate Yak 15 F frames. That's probably seven more than I would have preferred to have built over the course of this project. This aircraft represents a complete course correction over the previous design. Last time I tried to add all the features and the results were less than promising. I got rid of everything except the bare essentials. That meant getting rid of the single piece wing which came in a lot heavier than the Mark IV design. I also got rid of the flaps and the lead lined 3D printed retractable landing gear. The weight difference is kind of unbelievable. The last aircraft came in at about 3.5 kilograms and this one came in at about 2.3 when it was still in one piece. Hand launching this aircraft has been a bit of a nightmare over the course of this project and I think that's what killed this design. I th it, the angle of attack was a little bit too high and well it didn't flip over. That's uh, incremental improvement which has out of necessity become the name of the game. That was made possible by me finally adding the 20 degrees down thrust which completely eliminated the flipping over which is great but uh, it would have been nice to see it so. How many Yak-15s is too many? If this one doesn't tip the scales, then this one definitely does. This is a landing gear version of the new simplified design and uh, it should come in lighter than the original Mark V by a good amount and hopefully enough to get this thing in the air. As far as I'm concerned, the flight, well, if you'd call it that, of this previous design was actually pretty promising. Uh, I had control, but not enough lift. And with enough ground roll, I might actually get this thing in the air. The CG is right. I'm pretty confident at this point. So I'm going to put some landing gear on this and that will be that. And on that note, this video was sponsored by PCBWay. I had some landing gear printed in nylon PA12 glass fiber using PCBWay's SLS 3D printing. I'm hoping these will add some extra strength to this new landing gear design and they came out great. PCBWay offers excellent customer service and a huge range of manufacturing options, including PCB prototyping, sheet metal fabrication, CNC machining, injection molding, and tons of different types of 3D printing, even metal. I've used their services in a professional environment long before they ever reached out and their quality has always been outstanding. So I was genuinely excited when they contacted me because theirs is a service I would use regardless. They offer instant quoting so there's no waiting around and their shipping is super fast. For example, I received these landing gear a week after ordering them. From November the 28th to December the 28th, PCBWay is offering exclusive coupons, free specialty inks like purple, matte black, and pink at no extra cost, and 10% off 3D prints using UTR8100 or Somos Lido resins. If you want to check them out for your projects, click the first link in the description. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. I didn't go much into the rationale behind the landing gear design last time, so I'll talk a little bit about it now. These landing gear were from the original Mark V test run. This was my first attempt to reinforcing 3D printed landing gear with carbon rods. And they definitely were a step up from unreinforced landing gear. But they still failed. You can see that they failed in exactly the same way. The PETG just was not able to hold them together. That's where these come in. I think this modification will significantly improve this landing gear design. But a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And as of yet, I haven't come up with a solution for reinforcing the curved section of the landing leg. I've considered things like carbon fiber toe, but haven't tried anything yet. Leave a comment if you have any ideas about this. I suppose that's not entirely true. 
I could dramatically thicken the curved section to make up for the lack of reinforcement. It's not even that much heavier. But I took one look at it and I decided that I would rather have an overall weaker design than something like this on my jet. In some instances, function does not take precedent over form. You're probably wondering why I didn't just get them printed in metal, or maybe CNC'd. And next time, I think I will. But out of curiosity, I want to see what nylon can do. Since SLS 3D printing produces stronger bonds between the layers than FDM ever could. All these crashes have really shaken my confidence. I sincerely expected that I would be on my second or third aircraft by now. But here I am still figuring out the Yak-15. Hindsight has taught me the many flaws of my approach to this hobby. It's forced me to learn and grow in some pretty life-changing ways. I'd never attempted anything this complex or long-lasting before the Yak-15 project. And even with the many setbacks and frustrations, I'm glad I got into it. That said, I really do feel that I've taken it a longer path. My reluctance to fly a basic prop trainer has cost me a lot of money in crashed airframes. I also didn't clearly define my goals at the outset of this build. And that uncertainty meant an ever-expanding list of features and design changes. In a word, the project lacked design intent. For the next aircraft, I'm going to spend more time planning. I mentioned earlier that I'd simplified the new prototype a lot. In my design revision, I started by reversing a lot of the changes I'd made from the Mark 4 to Mark 5 prototype. I'd made a lot of mistakes, and this was an opportunity for me to correct them. The adage, if it ain't broken, don't fix it, comes to mind. And ultimately, most of my design revisions followed that logic. What I have here is a more refined version of the Mark IV prototype, rather than a radical departure like I'd originally planned. So yeah, here it is, the Mark V point something. On the previous designs, the carbon rod reinforcement across the fuselage always followed a linear path which meant that I needed to design these protruding channels that took up a lot of room inside the fuselage. This time I took advantage of the flexibility of carbon fiber, and instead had the rods follow the contours of the inner fuselage. That gave me a good amount more space in the interior. In a lot of RC models, I've seen a design similar to this, an outer shell and an internal frame for the battery and electronics mounting. I weighed the new design compared to the previous prototype forward fuselage, and I was quite impressed. It's not only lighter, but also allows for more airflow to the battery. A co-worker of mine said, A good design is a series of small wins. If nothing else, the Mark 5 point something has brought me that much closer to a product I can be proud of. With every new prototype, I've taken the opportunity to experiment with different techniques and engineering solutions. And even though sometimes I end up building a tank instead of an aircraft, I feel like I've got a wide berth of experiences designing airplanes. And I'm really looking forward to applying everything I've learned to the next jet. I'm super confident that it's not going to take me long to develop a functional and well-engineered aircraft. With the Yak-15 Mark 5 point something complete, the next thing will be to test fly it. And if the landing gear come back in one piece, I'll see about releasing the files to you guys. If however it doesn't work, I'll be putting the Yak-15 project on the back burner for a little while whilst I figure out the next step. I expect to produce a video of the flight and conclusion of the Yak-15 70mm project within the next few weeks, so stay tuned for that. I've actually invested in a new power plant for the next aircraft, the Micromystere. I intend to make a hand launchable Dassault MD454 which will eventually become a 1.8 meter wingspan aircraft. But I'm trying to be methodical about how I deal with the early prototype phase. Instead of wasting money on a full size aircraft, I'm starting small and working my way up. Small means I lose less money in the inevitable crash and I can reprint faster, so retest faster. I was actually lucky enough to go down to Newark Aviation Museum and see the Mystere up close. What a beautiful jet. Simply elegant. I really tried my best with the Yak-15, but there's just no substitute for standing next to the original machine. I might actually have to take a second trip up there just to get more pictures and absorb the shapes more completely. I asked a staff member about those doors on the upper fuselage, and it turns out they're blow-in doors. In other words, even full-scale jets use treater vents. I already have a CAD model, but after seeing the jet up close, I'm going to start from scratch and get it right. I want to thank you guys for all the insightful comments. It's been great having people who know what they're doing pointing me in the right direction. It definitely helped me learn a lot, and the support inspires me to take on greater challenges. 
There's a lot coming down the pipeline, but maybe you guys could let me know what you'd like to see from the next jet. Since I'm starting from the beginning, maybe I could do longer, more in-depth assembly videos or potentially even CAD specific. I'm also interested in making peripheral devices like the thrust -o meter for measuring thrust. But let me know whether you guys are interested in that sort of thing. Uh, leave your ideas in the comments. Anyways, that's all for now, guys. Thank you for watching.